The era of World at War Zombies has been concluded. The release of the release was enough to please fans of this ever-growing side mode and World at War Zombies stayed active for the following two years with excited players eager to see the highest round it can get to. But did you know that the release wasn't actually supposed to be the finale it rounded up being? By that, I mean it wasn't supposed to be a finale at all. No, Treyarch had one more map planned for the game, which was meant to take place in a large Nazi theater. However, Activision thought that a DLC pack releasing right before the next card release, Modern Warfare 2, will result in it being unprofitable. So the map was shelved and Modern Warfare 2, much like the Infinity War title before it, did nothing but only further the large spotlight that was now shining on this FPS series. So naturally, there were a lot of eyes on the next title which was Treyarch's next big game, Call of Duty Black Ops, which released on November 9th, 2010. And I'm pretty confident you don't need me to tell you this, but this game kicked all kinds of ass. It is still considered by many to be the best Call of Duty, especially considering how good both the campaign and multiplayer ended up being. But what about zombies? Well, Treyarch knew they had unexpectedly struck gold with this new zombies mode, so why stop the hype train? Black Ops released with not one, but two new zombie maps, with the one we're focusing on today being Kino de Toten, which translates to Theater of the Dead in English. What this map did for the series regarding popularity is astronomical. You see, there was a significant more amount of people playing this game than there was playing World at War, so Kino was the majority of people's first zombies map and it is still highly remembered and respected by practically everyone. The main question I want to ask is, does Kino to Toten deserve its respect? Recently, a lot of Zombies veterans have sought to answer that question themselves and have often arrived at a negative conclusion, branding Kino as overrated. But is it really overrated? Or is the love and appreciation for this map a result of bias since it was everyone's first exposure to the mode? Well, I want to give my own answer piece by piece. Now since this is an all new game entirely, Zombies has received a slight graphical upgrade. What at War looked amazing, but Black Ops is clearly more refined in this department, resulting in Kino looking pretty good. But as we know, the main appeal of the visuals lies in the art direction, and this map by all means excels. The location this time around, like I mentioned earlier, is an abandoned Nazi theater that has been lost to time, and this is presented by the poorly aged walls, dusty interior, and lack of any sort of lively activity. This place feels dead, which so happens to make for the perfect battlefield for slaughtering the undead. Also, a theater was a really smart setting for a zombies map since its size provides more than enough room for some nice mobility on later rounds, and each room just feels so different. Also, the lighting is perfect. The inside of the building is super dark, but you also get nice patches of sunlight shining from the holes in the roof above. It just looks so damn good. Going more to layout, this map uses the same two lane system Verruckt and Therese did, where there are two paths that can buy your way through that ultimately lead to the main general area of the map, which in this case is the stage. Now back then, the general consensus amongst zombie players was to find a good place to camp and hold your ground when it came to high round gameplay. However, with an area as open as this stage, people quickly found out a new strategy. Training, formerly referred to as rape trains during the more edgy years of the internet. This was the practice of hoarding up a crowd of zombies and running them in circles. In the right area, this was an unbeatable strategy if the player was skilled enough to not slip up and get themselves cornered. While this was done in World at War, it rose to popularity here and it would ultimately become the ultimate zombie strategy, which is to literally run in a circle. So yeah, the layout to Kino is really good. It looks nice, it's visually interesting, and it's structured really well. Oh, and of course there's Kevin Sherwood and Lena Sigmund's masterpiece, 115. Much like Beauty of Annihilation, this song perfectly encapsulates the player's non-stop zombie slaying fun while also sounding amazing. Now things get a little tricky when it comes to the new features. Returning features from past maps include the Pack-a-Punch Machine, Hellhound Rounds, Monkey Bombs, the Classic 4 Perks, and of course the Ray Gun. Much like the Reese, Kino has inherited all of the former map's past innovations to make its experience much more fleshed out. But what's new? Well, there's a new wonder weapon, the Thunder Gun. The bad news, the Winter of DG2 is now a thing of the past. 
The good news, the Thunder Gun makes the Wonder Wolf look like a children's toy. The Thunder Gun only has 12 shots, 24 pack a punch, but this weapon is an insta kill for an infinite number of rounds and sends a thunderous blast that would decimate hordes in one shot. Its tight ammo capacity is the only thing holding it back from being too busted. This weapon is legendary and it has earned its positive status in the zombies community. The next new thing are Nova Crawlers, a new sub enemy. Unlike Hellhounds, Nova Crawlers don't have a round of their own, but they do show up frequently in large clumps. While they're easy to take down, they leave behind a poisonous gas that would make your character dizzy, blur your vision, and slow your movements. This effect doesn't last long at all, but it can be a tad annoying and easily fatal if in a bad situation. Personally, I don't hate Nova Crawlers all that much. While I don't like them necessarily, I don't mind them since they do succeed in their job of spicing up the gameplay. And that's it. Yeah, this is where a lot of the contention surrounding Kino comes from. The main argument against it. Every zombies map leading up to it was innovative in some crazy way, but Kino is basically just the Reese but bigger. Now here's where I come in. I do acknowledge Kino's lack of new features, but the reason why that Wars maps were crazy innovative was because Trek was still figuring out what they wanted to do and how they wanted the mode to work, with the Reese being their ultimate achievement. After that, there wasn't really much room for new changes, so naturally Kino is going to be as simple as it is. However, one thing people don't acknowledge is Kino, in a way you might not expect, is quite innovative. And that's solely because it's a Black Ops 1 map, meaning there is an entirely new arsenal to work with here. This is one reason why I think Kino the Totem worked so well. No disrespect to it at war, but its weapons sucked ass. This was done intentionally since that game was going for a more horror approach. It was trying to make you feel vulnerable. But now that the focus has shifted to an action approach, Black Ops weapons don't hold anything back and they kick ass with a capital K. So yeah, I think Kino plays really well and it not introducing anything new isn't a bad thing. In fact, it was probably done intentionally so new players can get hooked on the mode. But what about the story? Well, unlike the Reese, we don't get too much information involving the newly formed narrative. What we do get is an explanation as to what happened at the end of the Reese. It turns out our crew fell back to the main teleporter and Tank made the mistake of firing a Wonder Wolf shot inside of it which overloaded the machine and somehow teleported our characters 20 years ahead into the 60s, during the Vietnam War. Before you question the logistics of the whole time travel aspect, Element 115 was set up to be unpredictable, so I can't believe it would do something crazy like that. Also, this is a pretty cool explanation as to how our characters are interacting with weapons that are definitely not from World War II. Regarding what we learned this time around, it turns out that this theater was an old Group 95 facility which experimented on zombies in an effort to get them to understand basic commands, but this process was a failure and it led to the whole place being infected and overrun of zombies. While the idea of controlling zombies is a core cool one, this is something we already heard Maxis try to do in Therese, so no new ground is broken with the radios here. So the story content is a little underwhelming. One cool thing however is our characters quotes are at their best this time around. To the A, some bitch! Do you like my glowing green balls? In conclusion, Kyoto Totem is a great map. While nothing new is introduced and the story info is lame, the map looks visually pleasing, it has a fantastic layout, and it plays smoother than the soothing sound of Lena Sigmund's voice. I love Kino. Is it overrated? Honestly? No. Listen, I personally don't think Kino is a perfect map, but not only is it a super fun experience, but the fond memories so many of us have of it is something to be cherished and what it did for the community is great. Kino the Totem is by all means a legendary map. But what do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have then please like, subscribe, and as always, I will see you guys next time. Peace out. This ought to be a good time. I did. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>